The point of this video is not a benchmark video. The point of this video is to see if a modest budget CPU cooler can handle a Coffee Lake refresh or 9th gen K chip running at stock speed, not overclocked. You can see I've got Cinebench running at the moment and the cooler I'm using is up here in the top left hand corner, CPU-Z and core temp. This is showing the temperatures of each core and the maximum reach during this period. Obviously at the counter and task manager that you can watch over there. I'm figuring this could be a common upgrade for many users now, many 8th gen users. The price of 9th gen chips is getting quite reasonable, either new or used. And I couldn't find an answer to this question on YouTube or across the net more broadly. So I'm not doing a benchmark video. I just want to see if a budget CPU cooler, like the one that I've got on my system, will be able to handle a 9th gen K chip running at stock speed, not overclocked. And you can see here I've got CPU-Z on the benchmark stressing the CPU and just running through the system specs at the moment. You can see that all the cores are at 100%. You can see the temperature. It's an i5-8500 obviously not overclocked, you can't overclock this system. The motherboard is an ASRock B360M Pro 4, which is a slightly above average motherboard in the B360 range with a pretty reasonable power delivery, but uh, nothing particularly special. Now I've speeded up the video here because you don't really need to sit here and watch five minutes of temperature movements. But you can see that the, the cooler is easily coping with 100% on all six cores. The highest reach so far is 54 degrees and you can see that it's doing it quite easily. Now we've slowed it back down and we're going to switch to the 9700K. You can see at idle, it's running around the 30 degrees. Now CPU Z is running again with all cores at 100%, all eight cores. You can see the temperatures have risen above what they were obviously on the 8500 getting up closer to 70 degrees. You can see the thermal junction max on this is 100 degrees C. So I was hoping to keep the, I was hoping to keep the cooler as standard on a non overclocked machine, but needed it to run at 85 degrees or less, I figured. And perhaps a bit lower than that, because here in Australia, it's coming up towards winter and this room is not particularly warm at the moment. It'd be much warmer in summer. So I was figuring it needed to be somewhere around 70, 75 or go and get a bigger and more efficient cooler. But we're running at 100% on all cores and it's comfortably keeping this CPU cool at the moment. It's been going for two and a half minutes. It seems that it is possible to use this cooler on a non overclocked K chip. I'm using this K chip because the software that I use for music production requires the fastest single core speed and the fastest single core speed I can get out of the box is an Intel K chip. The software is optimized for Intel. And while you can run AMD on it, it's optimized for Intel and the fast clock speed, the fast single core clock speed is an advantage for the software. I do a little bit of rendering, surfing the web, 
and play some pretty undemanding games at 1080p. But mostly this chip was chosen because of the music production, which requires the fastest clock single core speeds possible. Now you can see that we've been going for a five and a half minutes. We've reached 74 degrees on this core, 73, but it's managing pretty well. It's unlikely I'm going to be running at extended periods of time at 100% on all cores, but I just need it to be able to do that just in case. So I'm keeping it there. We'll see for a couple more minutes how it copes, but it looks like it's quite comfortably able to cope with this processor running at 100%. Now this cooler up here, the Cooler Master Hyper 103, it was the cheapest aftermarket cooler I could get. I didn't really want to use the stock Intel cooler, but I didn't really need to go and spend a lot of money for an i5, which was never really going to be overclocked or it's impossible to overclock. And rather than go out and buy a new cooler, I wanted to see if this cooler was able to, to keep this system cool or cool enough. And at the moment, it seems that it's quite capable of doing so. I'll obviously keep an eye on things, especially on warmer days and see how it copes then and do further testing. But it seems like this cooler at this point in time is quite able to do the job at hand. 